one of the things you'll hear emphasized at, at our church is that God chooses to work through his word and through his sacraments. That how That's how he chooses to create faith. That's how he chooses to strengthen faith. And so there's an emphasis, an obvious emphasis on the word and the sacraments, because these are, are what we call the, the means of grace, how God has chosen to deliver his grace to us. And so it's right for us to emphasize that and, and to place a, a certain importance and encouragement for people to be around the word and regularly participate in the, the sacrament. And it's, it's good that we do that, right? Uh, it's good that we encourage people to be like Mary instead of Martha. You remember that story? Uh, Mary and Martha were, were sisters and Jesus was coming to visit them. And Martha was, was working and working in the kitchen, getting ready for Jesus to be there. And, and while Jesus was there, she was still working in the kitchen. Well, Mary was doing something different. She was sitting and listening to Jesus and it was good that she was doing that. In fact, Jesus commended her for that because she was doing what was better. She was listening to the word of God. God was sitting there in the flesh right in front of her. And, and so she was listening to him. And so it's certainly good for us to encourage one another to regularly listen to the word, whether that's in personal Bible study or coming to church or uh, joining in a, in a group Bible study. It's good to be around the word. It's good to encourage one another to, to regularly partic partake of the Lord's Supper as, as the Holy Spirit works through these means to strengthen faith in a heart. But we don't want to emphasize this to the detriment of something else. We aren't just to be those who listen. That's not, that's not all we do. But we also do what that word says. The word is the thing that, that tells you what your new identity is in Christ. What God has done for you in your baptism. He has made you his own child. That's your new identity. You are connected to Christ. And so James, in his section for today, encourages us to live out that identity. Don't just be someone who listens to the word, but doesn't do what it says, doesn't live out that identity in their life. Be someone who listens to the word and takes that into their life. Someone who does the opposite, right? Someone who who listens to the word but does, doesn't do what it says uh, might be able to be called a, a hypocrite, right? Says one thing, does a different thing. In some ways, we, we all are, are hypocrites because we're sinners, right? We don't, we don't live up to the standard that the God has laid out in the, the Bible for us. And that's why we needed Jesus. That's why we still need Jesus to, to give us this grace, to give us this forgiveness when we fail to do that. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't aspire to do what John is telling us to do. Don't just be hearers, be doers. Live out your identity as a child of God in this world. James says this, Be people who do what the Word says, not people who only hear it. Such people are deceiving themselves. In fact, if anyone hears the Word and does not do what it says, he is like a man who carefully looks at his own natural face in a mirror. Instead, he carefully looks at himself, then he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continues to do so, since he does not hear and forget, but actually does what it says, that person will be blessed in what he does. God help you to do that, to live out your identity, embracing that identity for yourself as you hear it in the word and, and receive that forgiveness in the sacrament. But may God bless you as you live out that identity in the world around you.